Anybody know where the flag is? Yeah, I was just going to say, where's the flag, man? What's up, everyone? This is Booster, and welcome to the first hair scramble of the year that I'm going to be posting. Um, this isn't the first hair scramble of the year I raced, but unfortunately, last race, my camera had a malfunction, and I didn't get any of the recording, so it is what it is. I got things sorted out. We've got it working now, and that's what counts. Um... I guess except for the speedometer, I still don't have the speedometer straightened out like I usually have, so you guys just get this cool little icon in the lower right hand corner, I guess. Anyway, I'll tell you guys a little bit about the first race, and then I'll explain what's going on in this race. And I'll, actually, I'll explain what's going on in this race a little bit first. If you guys look, there are a ton of people out here racing right now, and especially in this class. This is the R class which is the 21 plus C class and we have 82 riders in this class today and that's crazy there you go crazy <laughs> um lining up there were like two rows just all the way across the starting area it was it was wild i didn't know if i wanted to be the first person to the corner or not which i didn't really have to worry about that I didn't have to worry about it all that much because I obviously wasn't the first person in the corner because I didn't even know where the flag guy was. I was just kind of looking at the crowd over there hoping like maybe one of them was the flag guy and he was going to throw the flag and I'd be able to see that and then start, which is what ended up happening, but I didn't get as good of a start as I would have. Look at this guy. Look at that guy. You see that? He's wearing those uh, red, white, and blue stars and stripes. That That's cool jersey. Those are cool riding pants. You'll see him up here ahead of me again in a little bit. But anyway, I'll explain what happened in the previous race. Um, I started out, there's a guy with a jersey again. Just a little eye candy for you guys. That That's cool. If that's you in front of me, I, I like your I like your threads. Anyway, in the last race, I, uh, I started out kind of near the back of the pack. Um, this was because it was cold out and my bike did not start on the first kick. It took a little bit to get it going. But once I got it going, I got I got out, um got out, started passing people in the woods, and I think my first lap I was in nineteenth. By the second, third, and fourth, somewhere in there. Anyway, I got all the way up to I think thirteenth or twelfth, somewhere in there. But then on my last lap I crashed. And I dropped back to 15th again. Which would have been really cool because Plymouth Blackhawks is a really cool track. And uh, I really I really enjoyed it. And it was just, it, it was a real fun time. I really was disappointed that I lost the video. So anyway, out with the old, in with the new. Here we are in Portland in a field made up of 82 people. And... I'm trying to keep up. The crazy thing about the class that I'm in is the guys out front are like fast enough to be placing like top 10 overall in the overall two hour and the guys in the back are slow enough to where they're just being lapped by the guys in front. So this class has like the widest variety of skill I would say out of all the classes. And I'm not one to complain and be like, oh, you know, like they should move up a class. Personally, I would because I think it would be a lot cooler to like win a trophy in the B class than in a C class. But I think before I start talking about that, I'd better just worry about winning a, uh, a trophy in the C class in general. I have yet to do that, but it's coming. I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll happen some at some point during this year. Um, this wood section. If you guys have watched the previous season of, I don't even know what to call it, Booster Hair Scramble Racing, um, I really like this wood section. It's it's like you're being, it's like you're in the woods, but it's not quite tight enough to where uh, to where you can't pass. You know, you don't really have to let anybody by 
they pretty much have to work for it themselves and I really like that because once again I am not one of the fastest guys but you know I pass people once in a while and if I can pass people here in the woods anybody can pass in the woods and this is the kind of fun stuff right there you see in the R class is people crashing trying to find ways around them and I hated this right here I took that outside line and I was kicking myself for just letting that guy by like that but that's the kind of stuff you have to be able to do you have to be able to spot stuff like that and take advantage of it and that guy did so props to him one thing that you guys may want to listen for in this race is me just ringing this bike out like crazy <laughs> I had told Matt before the race I was like I'm gonna be on the pipe I'm gonna ring this bike out for everything it's got I wouldn't be surprised if I needed a rebuild by the end of the day but <laughs> so anyway out of the woods onto the motocross track and once again I have not ridden much motocross but I am getting a little more comfortable I'm not just absolutely getting stomped out here. I'm jumping a little bit. I'm carrying a little bit of speed. You can hear me ringing that bike out. I'm still afraid to do this jump right here, though. This, like, uphill little double thing. And the next one, too. I'm afraid of that. This guy clears it. I should try it, but I don't know. I just didn't. So... It is what it is. So once you're through there, you're on to what I described in the first race as the soupy mess. And it is. It's pretty loose through here. You got to really get on that bike to try to get through it. And right here, everybody was going on the left and going around the jump. But you're supposed to go through the flags. You see the flags on both sides? Like people were cheating and going around the jump. You're supposed to go over the jump. I don't know why they didn't have it flagged off off to the side to make sure people weren't going to do that, but maybe they did and someone took the tape out. I don't know. Anyway, I don't blame those guys for doing it, but I was going to, you know, make sure that I went through and followed the rules. I'm big on the rules. I like to follow the rules. I will break the rules. Don't get me wrong. Like, if there's, if there's people all piled up, and the best way to get through the corner is to go around the whole thing and, like, skip to the next one, I will do that. But usually what I'll do when I do something like that is if, if at all possible, um, I don't try to gain a position off of it. You know, I'll let the guy that was ahead, like, go ahead when he gets up past. But I'm not going to sit there and wait for 20 people to pick their bikes up off the ground. Anyway, out here in this, like, cornfield here that we're riding in, I absolutely hated this last year during my first race. It tired me out. I wasn't very good in the loose sand stuff, and it just, it ate up all my energy, and I just had a really rough time of it. But this year, I think I'm a lot faster in this cornfield than I was last year. I, well, I don't just think it. I know I'm a lot faster because I'm actually passing people this year. And I feel like out here was where I was pretty much at my fastest and able to make the most passes. And I think that's mostly because I was trying to carry more speed, not so much into the corner, but let off later than everybody else and gain just a little bit on them. And then try to get on the gas a little sooner as well. And it was pretty easy to see where you were supposed to go, like in real life here. But watching this on the video, it's kind of hard to see where you're actually supposed to be riding. Listen to me ring that bike out. <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna have to replace the top end. I'll run it. I'll run it as long as I can. We'll see what happens. Oh, so here I've been fighting with this guy, trying to get past him. I've been following him through most of the cornfield. Yeah, I think I got him. Yeah, I got him here. So on to the next guy. Every once in a while, it seems like there's one guy that's harder to pass than the others. And then when you get around him, for some reason, you can get around, like, a bunch of other people extremely quickly. I don't know why that is, because they're all going the same speed. But for some reason, I'll oh, ride the wheelie. For some reason, if you can get past just that one guy, it seems like it's easier to get past the guys in front of him as well. I 
can hear myself breathing hard on the video. And this was actually pretty smart right there. If you look next to some of the, uh, like the flag posts, you can see that they made little like dirt piles there. And that was really smart because once the tape gets ripped out, you can still look ahead and see those dirt piles and see where you're supposed to go. And right now, if you look, some of these guys are in the X class. I've caught up to the X class, which is the under 21 C class. I think it's 14 year olds or 21 year olds, something like that. I've caught up and I'm actually starting to pass some of them. They only started 30 seconds ahead of us, so it's not like they were way out in front. But that really didn't happen to me too much last year, so that's an improvement. I think just by watching this in general, you guys will be able to see that I've improved quite a bit over last year. I, I think I'm a, a lot faster than I was last. Well, I guess my times wouldn't say I'm a lot faster, but I feel like I'm substantially faster. All right, those two guys got around this guy in the orange. Now I got to figure out how to without, without ramming him and just taking him out. Is that still him? No, no, I must have got around him because there's the guy in yellow now. This, air, this corner right here kind of scared me a little bit because there were some sticks sticking out and I didn't want to get jammed by them that bad. This grass track part here, I don't know, like this, this is probably the part of the track that I like the least. And that's because it feels like to me, like the grass kind of holds in the braking bumps and the whoops and all that. And it seems like all the previous year stuff is like just stacked up. Like at least out in the cornfield, like it gets plowed under every year. And then that seems to smooth some of the stuff out. But this grass track part just seems like it's, it just seems rougher to me. I have a little battle with this guy for a little while trying to get past him. See, this is the part of racing that's fun. I don't want him to pull over for me. I don't want him to just let me by. I want to earn that, and I want to get past him. And right here, I come in harder off the jump than him and grab a handful of throttle, and then down through the whoop section here. He's bouncing all over the place, but I managed to get by him. I feel like in the straightaways, a lot of guys don't grab that much throttle. They're kind of afraid to go real fast. But look how look how far ahead those guys are ahead of me right now. And I feel like through the straightaway section, like as far as my class goes, you know, not as far as the actual fast guys, but as far as my class goes, I feel like I gain on these guys anytime we've got a straightaway. That's one thing that really made this race fun, though, is that having a field that's 82 deep, I feel like there was never a shortage of people to pass. I hesitated a little bit and didn't double that the first time, but because I almost made it on some of the other laps, I was like, yeah, I got this. And I actually had the balls to, uh, <laughs> to be able to jump across it, which is not what I've been used to doing on a motocross track. I've been really slow. This was kind of fun. This uphill through this sandy stuff. It was all loose. It was kind of, it was a little difficult for me. I don't know how it was for everyone else, but I thought it was fun. Look at that group up there. <laughs> Cut the corner. Everybody else is. This is like where I was talking about. There's guys falling down and stuff in there. So it's like, yeah, whatever. I'm not gonna go and like risk running over someone just so I can stay within the ribbons if I'm only like going over a few feet. Now, if I were to cut like three or four corners, that wouldn't be real cool, but. Man, I can hear myself breathing real hard. This right here is one part that I would really like to improve on in the future. As soon as my screen comes back on. Oh, well, it's gone. <laughs> anyway, there's some jumps right there. I think I actually edited it out. But there's some, like, little jumps right there that are just kind of rolling together. And I think you double the first one, and then you double out of the second one. 
and I'm I don't really have the confidence to be able to do that so I edited that out so you didn't have to watch it mostly so I didn't have to show it and that's just something I'd like to do I'd like to be able to hit these and actually like clear them that would be nice It's nice though, one thing that's really nice is they've got a lot of these being tabletops. And without them being tabletops, I would be, I'd be too scared to jump them. But with the way they are, it's nice that they keep it like beginner friendly. a fun little section here snaking back and forth last year I seem to remember there being like some mud in here like right right down here we went to the right and it was muddy but this year this right here going up to the left and going out around this that's a lot more fun and coming down here I like that I think that's a lot better the, the way they worked this course and they routed it I liked it a lot better than last year. Here you had a chance, or you could go to the right or to the left. And if you'll notice that guy that was in blue, he went through the enduro cross section and I decided to go around it because walking around the track before the race, I kind of looked things over and I thought to myself, well, I thought, I think that it will be faster to take the actual bypass. But actually going through the bypass here, You'll see that guy that I was behind right there cuts right back out in front of me again. So it ended up being like almost exactly the same amount of time. But I think I did gain a few positions because I saw some people falling down in there. And there was a chance that they were ahead of me and I might have got hung up and, and all of that. So I think I actually gained a little bit by taking the bypass. It's coming down here through scoring. Right here, I do a little cheating again. You see that, guys? But then I was like, well, no, I'm not going to take the position away from him while I'm cheating here. You know, he was going the way you're supposed to go. So it's like, no, jump out back in front. You know, I'm not going to take a position just by jumping out in front of somebody like that. So I go through scoring, and on the monitor, it told me I was in 28th. Now, at this time, I... I didn't know how many people were in my class. I knew there were a lot, but I didn't know there were 82. Look at this little line I'm trying to take. I thought, well, maybe this one will be faster. Let's give it a try. But it was pretty tight through here, and I didn't end up gaining anything on him. I think I maybe lost just a little bit, but I think that this is the time early in the race to try to find some of the faster lines. And if they are faster, you use them the whole race. And if they're not faster, well, then you don't use them. But if you can find a line that's faster and use it each and every lap, then that really helps out. Shit. Check this out. There's a pile up right here. Oh, yeah. I was pretty proud of myself for this. <laughs> Got around him. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know how cool it is to think that you're cool yourself, but... I thought it was pretty cool. I was like, yeah. Right here, I got a little bit of speed. Not on this one, on the next one right here. I actually bottomed my bike out right there, so... I definitely don't have my suspension set up for motocross. So I don't know how much harder I can actually hit these jumps if I'm not going to fully commit if you fully commit you can clear the whole thing and come down on the other side but if you're not going to commit to it like like I have not been I don't know if my suspension can really take all of that whoa this guy in front of me is getting wild I was thinking man I need to get past him before he takes me out Just ignore those little things on the screen. But whoa, what's he doing? Whoa, he's wheeling. Oh, he almost run into me. <laughs> he almost did take me out. Ringing that bike out for all it's worth. <laughs> I showed this video like 
to my dad like as soon as I got back from the race telling him about it. He was like, shift, you need to shift. It's like, yeah, I know, but <laughs> she makes good power when you've got it way up on the pipe like that. Now I'm starting to get a little tired. Like that doubt is creeping up into my mind. I'm thinking like, man, like I've been, I'm pushing it. And I don't know if I can keep this pace up for two whole hours. I'm gonna see what I can do here, but I don't know. Oh, I missed a gear there. I started missing gears too. That kind of ticked me off. This guy ahead of me now, he's getting a little wild too. Gotta try to get past him. See, he's getting a little crazy in the sand and I don't I don't want to run him over and I don't want him to take me out. Whoa, whoa! Again. I'm like a magnet for people trying to fall into me. Oh, you hear me miss a gear there? And I missed it again. And I'm sitting here like yelling to myself and that guy sitting over there like, what's this guy's problem? <laughs> I'm just yelling at the bike. I still don't know how these guys keep this pace up. They must just be in like so much better shape than I am and I don't feel like I'm in bad shape you know like I don't know I, maybe I need to do some more sprints or something but as far as endurance goes like I can get my heart rate up, heart rate up pretty high and I can keep it up pretty high for quite a while but it's like putting the hammer down and trying to keep it down and keep up that like sprinting pace I can't do that Here we go, I'm gonna double it this time. Almost. My back tire hit it a little bit. Woo, that was probably the biggest jump I've done right there. But I'm starting to get more used to this. I'm starting to get more used to the motocross track. I'm getting comfortable with the bike. And that's definitely a lot more than I could say last year. Okay, so I actually did another lap and I cut that one out, but I dropped from like 29th to like 38th within the lap and I knew I was getting tired and actually next year I have not next year the next day I had a really big day at work where I had to meet with some real important people so I couldn't risk getting hurt so I rode back and I went up and hung out with my wife and watched the rest of the race and that's a day so anyway I did not finish but I had a great time um didn't get hurt and it was pretty cool um next time i'll go out and we'll see how good i can do again next time but i just had too much stuff going on at work that's too important to be able to risk this so until next time guys and i promise next time i'll give it my all and try and finish as best as i can this is booster and i'll catch you guys later